The Mercedes S-Class Coupé and convertible facelift here in the special IAA Motor Show coverage. The normal one and also the AMG versions here on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with me, with Thomas. So we're going to take a deep look, exterior and the interior. Also have some interior special and also looking to the future a little bit and then compare non-AMG and the sporty AMG models. What has changed from the facelift? Recently there was a sedan, now facelift also for Coupe, Bose and convertible and everything. Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! So with the recent restyling, there is a Panamericana-like front grille, you know, a little bit closer to the AMG GT models. This one here, the S450, has this front grille with one horizontal fin. You will soon see a difference to the AMG models here with those diamond pins. I really like those diamond pins here. Optional LED headlights right there. And um, this one here is, you know, there are normal LED headlights and then the optional also with the high beam which we see here the top spec of that. The hood you can see it doesn't go to the very front it is basically an inlet hood let's call it that way. It's also uh, with for example an E63 difference to a normal E-class and here also in the S-class you have it here all the way that you have this lip here so this special lip in the front. Let's move on over to the side profile and by the way base price 100,000 euros in Germany and 140 for the convertible. 5 meters or 16 foot 4 is the total length. Here also with 20 inch optional rims, really huge. Of course the form of the coupe is really beautiful. Here with those very strong shoulders, definitely a very attractive design, but it's also a huge car. And there are also other coupes available in the Mercedes lineup, which are better in price performance for sure. If you think about E coupe and C coupe, this one here than the top of the line coupe. The side profile hasn't really changed in the facelift. There will be a lot of interior changes, I can already tell you so far. And of course, I want to hear your opinion. Would you rather go for the convertible or for the coupe? We'll soon take a look at the convertible, which is, of course, a little bit different in the side silhouette. But for convertible, still, you will see remains this coupe style. The rear now comes with organic LED from standard equipment, 66 different LED lighting di diodes here, and really spectacular design, you know, in those different levels. And um, so, you know, this is definitely something you can, you know, spice up your car life with. But of course, in general, the exterior changes are rather minor. Here in the 450, remember the style here with this chrome diffuser, pretty spectacular. But of course, the AMG models will be more aggressive. And let's take you on a tour through the interior. What I found really amazing is the bright styling. Like here, I mean, red contrast is not really my style, but then, you know, everything is so bright. I love this color combination. However, in the S class especially, an abundance of animal skin is being used that is totally unnecessary. Probably the reason I would mainly go for the E coupe because we have more sustainable materials there. But the styling, I think that they've managed it quite well. Also very wide, those seats. The main changes with the facelift, first of all, a new steering wheel. The S-Class steering wheel, um, let's say a little bit old-fashioned maybe. This one here has a sportier lip now with, you know, those two-fin design. This is also the AMG steering wheel to give it even sporter touch, but also the base models will receive new steering wheels. And the second biggest change is you can see the new monitors. We know them already from the from the E-Class, for example, 12.3 inch each, and directly next to each other in the highest spec you can get. The left one will be then for the instrument, the right one for the rest of the infotainment system. Seat control at the inside of the doors. The only bad thing about this, I mean, it looks good and it's also basically logic, where you can do what? Also for seat cooling here, there, for example. 
But then again, when I'm a car reviewer and I get inside this vehicle, then want to show you how I'm sitting and want to control the seat, <laughs> it's not possible that well. And I have to do like this. So it's not really a solution for car reviewers. But of course, I mean, when the car is closed, it will be no problem for you. I think this is an important function that you can lengthen the lower seating area. You have a very comfortable seating position here. And I remember we are having the driving review of the s um, I think two years back. And to me, you know, the, the most, um, you know, the attractive function is this curve tilting, which is available in a special suspension, 2.65 degrees. It's possible that the car really leans like a motorcycle in the corner. This is one, you know, the most special feature about this vehicle for sure. It is somewhat, you know, a sporty looking position because the, the window is rather, you know, very flat. So, and also to the sides, um, you feel like in a sports car a little bit. It's really long, also the long hood. Then again, you have this very comfortable seating position. There's a little, you know, you could say it's a contrast, is it? I'm not exactly sure. And, you know, the whole design, look at this, you know, how the air vents are shaped here is very, you know, it's not joyful because it has elegance and also with those floating lines, but it's not simplistic at all. So, it is, you know, to some extent a little bit overwhelming, also due to the bows, you know, to the, to the huge screens there. So um, it offers you a lot of, you know, like wow effect. But sometimes you may think, could it be maybe a little bit more simplistic? Or what's your take on that? Now we can see the two gauges next to each other, which we know from the E-Class. And really interesting, especially, you know, the, this setup together, actually. And... Um, Let's put it on again on the left side when I hit the ignition. There we are. And you can also also control it then with the thumbs. So um, for the left screen, you used your left thumb, and uh, for the right screen, you used your your right thumb. So um, uh, those controls have been introduced also with the um, with the E class already. So you can also click, it, for example, on those button and. But usually it would be, you know, with, uh, you can go back here, for example, also all again with the thumb, but it's obviously not working at the moment to scroll. Maybe it's also because the car's not really powered. I'm not exactly sure. But you can check it out in our E-Class review too, how it's done at the steering wheel. What's interesting here is on, you know, on this infotainment system, this is the Mercedes Connect, where you can also have, the, you know, the Apple CarPlay when you connect your phone via, um, via cable. GPS looks like this, Franklin Motor Show here at the moment. And interesting new feature is now when you look at this lower button for the multimeter system, because it's not a touch screen, so you can either use the touch buttons at the scenery or this one here, the lower one, so the, the really low button. Um, for example, when I zoom in and out now, when I go all the way to the left, the button basically stops and when I go all the way to the right also the button stops so before you could just turn this button all the way around endless and now it has really a stop function pretty interesting talking about the middle armrest when you open it here you say wait a minute what is this how shall I access it as a driver it's actually <laughs> possible to flip it up from the other side so um, Pretty interesting, this solution here, isn't it? And here another cockpit overview look. It's really, you know, art in automotive design, that's for sure. Also with those, you know, yacht style from expensive boats. This wood style. It's really impressive what I've done here, that's for sure. Other new features? Well, it's also about the assistance systems because, you know, the S-Class, same with the sedan, was a little bit behind the E-Class for the assistance system. So also, you know, the semi-autonomous driving functions and, you know, the new assistance system with the updates for, you know, uh, pedestrian recognition and stuff. This was now carried over also to the S-Class models. That's an important feature. Also, the new energizing comfort control. Um, I cannot start the vehicle here at the moment at the motor show, but it would be like there, you know, energizing comfort in the menu. And this one here sets up, for example, like seat massage, ambient light, a scent, which comes from the perfume spender, synchronizes those features. And for example, you set like also music, for example, and 
for maybe a relax mode or wake me up mode depending on your mood and this is you know one step further to that the car is basically a little bit communicating with you and reacts on your uh, current status of you know body and mind so the front door is longer than the smart for two <laughs> the reason is that you can actually access this vehicle also in the rear and well you can see already as the front seat there is uh, at the moment it's really hard to fit in there and i have the impression that in the little bit shorter E-Class Coupé, you can sit even better in the rear. I mean, as the seat, as, when, as I had it as a driver, it squishes me now, and then realizing, oh, I'm squishing Thomas, so I move a little bit to the front. Well, there are some, some gaps for the knees there. Also, headroom-wise in the front, with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, it was very close in the front and so it is in the rear but as the ceiling is raising just a little bit again it is okay for me to sit here but again considering the length of the vehicle there's you know hardly any space left there's also the burmester sound system here in the rear another high-end part some more storage and right there you can have some backup holders and so much storage maybe for an iPad or something like that here. So it is fairly comfortable in here for a coupe, but you know the biggest problem would be the knees when you, you know uh, when you're a little bit shorter then it's no problem. And for kids you got also got the Isofix anchor points right there. So maybe <laughs> really good space for child seats. Although the seat heating that is also available for the rear then won't have the biggest effect. And talking about versatility, let's see. Well, electric hatch basically, um, small hatch but still electric. And well, the only space you have is in the lengths, you know. Of course, considering the size of the vehicle, again, uh, very bad performance as well, luggage space. But then again, it's really suitable for, you know, airport travel, big luggage and so on. Um, of course, no replacement tire right there. This is here for the, this is the subwoofer of the sound system we have right there. Again, to show you, like the height is actually quite okay. And, um, you know, if I reach in there, that's the maximum you can get. And <laughs> it's really funny. I mean, for such a small hatch, that we still have an electric function right there. But, you know, in the name of luxury. So the entry level engine, if you could call it that way, the V6 with 367 horsepower right there in the S450 Coupe. This is reserved for the coupe only. Sadly, they do not offer an entry-level engine for the convertible. That would be then the next one, the V8, with 469 horsepower in the 560. Of course, it's uh, changed a little bit from market to market, but basically, it's you know, or you know, it's um, the main direction V6, V8, and, and so on is pretty clear. So this is about the normal engine. I would say let's take a look at the AMG models. And you know, we at Autogrefood always want to give you even more information in detail, especially about interiors. And that's why Thorsten Bodenberg is joining us from Forcia, because this is a supplier that's actually delivering a lot of the interior parts of the S-Class, Sedan, Coupe and the convertible. And of course, I'm always interested in sustainable materials and new technologies in interiors. So maybe you can tell us something, what is special about the s Class, Coupe, Coupe, Convertible, Sedan, Interior, what have you done here which is very innovative? Okay, there are really quite some specialties about this car. First of all, it's the first car in that volume that has 100% cut and saw. That means uh, you really have uh, artificial leather and uh, real leather in all of the cars uh, of, the, of this model, of the Model S class. So it's a lot, you know, a um, lot of work hours involved actually, and you have to be able to cope with that in the production. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so at the peak, um, there have been more than 500 cars produced per day um, with 100% cut and sew. So what you know that um, you know a normal viewer can imagine. What would be the difference? What is you know like a, a normal like a normal compact or small car? What's the exact difference in the production process? Um, well, first of all, you can already feel it when you sit in the car. You have either a hard surface, a polypropylene surface usually, or you have a softer surface, which is usually a PVC skin or PU skin. And in this car, you only have leather-like materials, either real or artificial leather. 
But there's also more, you know, underneath the surface. Maybe you can show us also the, at the inside of the doors what you have done there. Yeah, indeed. Uh, you would be surprised if you look behind this door. You would see a lot of natural material. This door, this door panel, is produced from uh, more than 70 percent of natural and wood fiber. So it's actually almost 80 percent, and that's our contribution to more sustainable materials for our customer. But also, it's uh, a contribution to weight saving. So the weight of this door panel is only 1,415 grams per square meter, which is um, quite benchmark. And as for um, you know, the surfaces again, um, do you also feel that the trend is also moving more towards sustainable materials there? We do, we do indeed, and that's why we also started activities on vegan leather. So it doesn't need to be um, plastics, PVC or something. It doesn't need to be real leather, it can also be uh, pure um, bio-based. So how far are you actually in those bio-based materials? I mean, that really makes sense as a full cycle then. Is it actually already possible? Could you just enroll that into an actual vehicle? Not yet. We, we are able to do that uh, in other areas. For example, the carrier materials, they are sustainable with uh, natural fiber in cereal production. But for the surface materials, it will take us another few years, I would say. So when looking at an exterior of a car, you often talk about famous German word Spaltmaße, so the small gaps on the exterior and more engineering work. But also accounts for the interior. So how can you ensure that you know everything really fits together and you know how do you do it in the production process? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, there is something quite like Spaltmaße also in the interior. Of course, there are also gap measures, but there's also the seam lines and the seam lines is a real challenge to um, produce them and reproduce them in the constant and high quality. So for that purpose we have developed a system, we call it PREPO, which stands for pre-positioning, that allows us to repeatedly have exact seam lines in the interior of the car. What would be an example here, like in, in the interior, where, where we can see it? You can see it, for example, in this area. So this is uh, a very nice area to implement this uh, innovation. So because it's not, it would be easier when it's just a straight line, but here we have those, you know, those, um, you know, those curved lines. And then exactly. It would be, um, and, you know, the, the whole piece comes ready then actually for you, you know, from, from your factory delivered like this. Exactly, yes. And uh, you would see, if you look at the carrier, you would see a groove. And uh, in the surface material, you have a, a profile on the back of the seam and everything fits uh, into each other perfectly. Um, I just discovered here, you know, this, um, this middle armrest, which has actually a quite funny function that you mm -hmm. can, you know, I showed it earlier, that you can open it actually both ways and still it doesn't have any impression that it would be, you know, ripped off or something like that. So there has to be a very clever mechanism behind it. Maybe you can shed some light how it really works. Well, we, first of all, I should mention, we spend a lot of effort into innovation at Foresia. So that's something where we spend millions every year, where we file more than 500 patents every year. And those innovations, uh, you find them in all areas. You find them about the surfaces, you find them about uh, sustainability in terms of green materials, of lightweight. And you also find them in terms of mechanisms. For example, this mechanism that has been implemented here on the on the S-Class Coupe and also on the S-Class Limousine. So how does it work? You know, does the manufacturer say, you know, invent something special for the middle armrest? Or is it like one of your uh, engineers or, you know, creative workers has, ah, I got, got this idea, or how does the collaboration work and which, you know, which way does those idea, flow of idea go? So, of course, there is the dialogue between our experts and the customer, but we also want to be a step ahead of the customer. So that means we have innovations that we start from our own motivation, and each innovation goes through a very structured innovation process with defined milestones. And uh, once we have reached a certain milestone, it means we have really pre-developed an innovate or a technology such that it's mature enough to be taken to to be taken to serial production. So just taking you know this piece as an example, 
how long would it take or did it maybe take to develop such a thing and how much work is involved actually just in this one piece? Mm. So innovations typically take between six and 18 months, I would say. Some a bit longer, some are a bit faster. Of course, it depends on the urgency of the customer um, demand or of the customer need that we detect. Um, but six to 18 months is a good uh, rule of thumb. So when you're an S-Class Coupé or convertible customer and open this one here the next time, you know, year of development for this one here, remember it. <laughs> and we're also taking a look into the future because we want to see how the door or the inside of the door of the future will look like. We know that there's already functions like, you know, a heated inside of the doors when you put your arm right there. But this door actually is able to do even more. Yes, it is indeed. Uh, also, what you have seen before is more or less, even though it's a very premium product, it's a standard for us. Now, here you can see a trend that you will perceive in many show cars and even in the first uh, serial cars, if you go along the fair. It's uh, what we call switchless HMI. So, typically, what you have in this area in serial cars is mechanical switches. Now, based on a cooperation with the company Kanatu, that we started at the beginning of the year in the context of what is called Startup Autobahn, an initiative by Daimler-Benz. Uh, we have built up this prototype of a switchless HMI for this module that typically hosts the window lifter function, the mirror adjustment, and uh, child, look, child lock. So what you can see here is that we have a perfect black panel effect when the door was switched off or the, the lights were switched, switched off. Um, you don't see any icons. As uh, soon as you switch it on, you can see the icons. And then, just like you would do in a serial car, you can open the window. This is indicated here via a small display. And you can also close the window again with the same operation that you would do in a, in a regular serial car. Of course, you don't need to have a display in this area of the door panel. This is because we don't have a window here. But on the other hand, you could have a display for other purposes. For example, you could have such a beautiful integrated display to indicate what is usually shown in the side mirror. So also for, for safety reasons, that will make me as a red flashing light when someone is next to you? Exactly. So this is a perfect example for function integration. You have uh, yeah, functions like window lifter, and a mirror adjustment, you can integrate ambient lighting. You have seen a small light stripe appearing here. That's just an example. And you can also integrate displays if you like to. So if I want to customize my car at some point, it may be possible that I you know, get inside the car and then there's like a floating auto fuel sign there or logo. Of course, that's absolutely possible. Hmm, what about that? Should be something for us, shouldn't it? What do you think about this idea? And now we're going really low. You see the car sits a little bit lower. Carbon fiber front lip. The vertical fins now here in the front grille. Even more aggressive styling with the AMG badge. This one here is the S63, the V8 with 612 horsepower. What's your take? Rather prefer the AMG or the normal one? And soon we'll also take a look at the S65 with the convertible. But first we'll continue with this vehicle. So this is also an example of downsizing because so far this one had 5.5 liter of displacement, no, 4 liters. And why is it so fast? The all-wheel drive. It says also here the 4Matic Plus system for the V8 and so you can also get that traction on the ground. Also combined with a new 9-speed multi-clutch transmission. Those are basically the two reasons why this car is even faster now. 20 inch alloys for this one here and also carbon ceramic brakes that you can also break the car properly. I mean it's always the question do you really need it for road cars? Well the advantage is the alloys are kept cleaner you don't have the standard braking dust 
hey, that might also be something good against fine dust in the city. So it can be very environmental if you say, hey, I got ceramic brakes, so I created less fine dust in the city because fine dust not only coming from the exhaust, also from tire, rubber, and also from the braking process. Other than that, usually it's more for the racetrack because if you don't hammer them from time to time, the brakes, they tend to you know, start squeaking and stuff. Other than that, the AMG also here has the carbon fiber lower lip than the side mirror caps here also with the yellow accentuation. The rest is basically the same with the normal coupe. You just see it in the very end that we also have a small carbon fiber spoiler right there. And here it is and I think, you know, it is not too big but still I think, I'm not sure. I think it doesn't really fit the overall design language of the vehicle. Or what's your take on that? Other than that, also the new OLED taillights right there. And of course the differentiation is usually in the lower part with a huge carbon fiber diffuser right there. And then the exhaust pipes, well, those ones are again those fake exhaust tips, the outer part, small and round, they are inside if you take a closer look. So what do we have here? The extreme sound insulation with those double glass windows. This is one of the reasons why it's so quiet even at higher speeds on the motorway right here. As styling decor on the interior of carbon fiber. So this is the sporty style then with yellow contrast stitches. And then I want to hear your opinion. Is that too much black and then with yellow contrast stitches all the way? It's maybe here the, the yellow hornet style or <laughs> something like that. Pompous, maybe you could you could call it. My favorite, of course, here the steering wheel, the microfiber on the side. Recently, in the AMG GT, we have also seen the steering wheel with microfiber all the way around. Not exactly sure if it's available here, but I really like the grip and also that it's here a little bit flatter on the side. That is, you know, has this pure racing car atmosphere. By the way, about those um, uh, those, those touch buttons here, left and right. I just heard that you can actually deactivate them somewhere in the menu. Um, and then, you know, then it would actually be, be possible to, uh, you know, that, that, that they're not working, but they are actually working. So um, let's turn on the right side of the infotainment system too. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, I think, I think here they are deactivated too. Maybe they don't want people to mess up with the infotainment system. But in the convertible next to us they will work. Then I can show you um, that. So under the hood of Designio Grey Magno Matte, we got this V8 4 liter bi turbo, 612 horsepower. And the really interesting thing is now I can already tell you, this one here is actually faster than the V12. 3.5 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour and you know this is you know the, the special thing about this very engine it's also lighter than the v12 and um, so the thing is this one here for 170,000 euros or the v12 for 250,000 euros then with 4.1 seconds so you have 0.6 seconds this car is faster for half the money, <laughs> just, you know, approximately. So um, the sportiest way to go would exactly be the S63 then. Of course, some say, you know, I really want that V12 and that's basically the only reason they still have it in the portfolio because some want to pay for it, basically. And now let's go with the convertible and also with the S65. So you can think about, shall I buy a house or shall I buy this vehicle? that would be your choice. What I find most impressive with the vehicle is you know, the, the grille in the lower part on both sides. That looks really massive in this bright chrome. Usually the sporty vehicles are always put in the dark colors, but why not doing it exactly this way? And now you can see the silhouette of the convertible when it's closed. You can see it is somewhat like a coupe right there. So really stretched out. There was a lot of work in the building of the roof itself here. Different colors available here in blue. Red is also available. Black, for example, brown. Big contrast to the white. And we can also open the roof. Also with the key, we have some help from Mercedes staff right there. Then you can see the, the process 
pretty interesting for sure. It takes some time. You can also do it while driving, you know, limited speeds, of course. And then you can see that when the roof is opened, you basically have a main straight line just going from the front all the way to the to the back. And you know, really beauty. Of course, the proportion is all coming from that because the car is so long. Also, there are no dark rims here. It's all chrome polished right there. Also, 20 inch, pretty massive again, and the carbon fiber. Uh, carbon ceramic brakes right there again to have the best braking performance. Also no carbon fiber style, chrome style. I think it's good contrast here with the 63 and 65 that we see in those showcase cars that you can you know, basically individualize your vehicle pretty much even on the exterior already. So and now to the rear you see here without the carbon fiber spoiler as we see in the 63. And don't you also think that it has more elegance without it? So what I love about convertible interiors, especially for our cameraman. So Jonas will be very happy that it's very easy to film the interior now. My favorite features here, the matte wood styling, also natural way. You can also hear it how it feels <laughs> again. Again, color-wise, I love the interior. Too bad they don't offer the same one in the Artico leatherette. So this one here, all full of cows, sadly. I like the new AMG steering wheel. Also, since the facelift, this adds a new modern touch to the whole vehicle. And of course, here with the convertible, you can even directly take a look here at the rear seats again. Well, the space is somewhat limited, for sure. And even more interesting, the Burmester the high-end sound system is right here. Well, I'm not sure, really sure if they would survive a crash because, you know, the, the, end, the roll bars come up there. Maybe you have to say goodbye to your sound system. So, drive safe, they don't tip over <laughs> and you can save your sound system. And of course, this convertible would be exactly my style. Wow, it's so bright in this interior. It shines not only from the sun, or in this case here, the, uh, the lights from above, the artificial lights. It shines also from below from this very interior. Yeah, I mean, over the long term run, it maybe collects some stains. But then again, I really love bright interiors as they are really joyful to look at. And also, when you drive, even maybe in a cold winter day, they still give you know, some warmth to your heart. But assistance systems, by the way, you can always pick or depick them here in the left upper part. For example, lane assist, uh, night vision and putting the vehicle a little bit up. Talking about suspension, didn't do that yet. General Escopé and Escobar, they come with air suspension standard. And optionally, you can for this anti-curve suspension and of course the AMG models have special AMG setups to the suspensions each. And now we've solved the riddle. So you need the key for that because you can actually click those touch buttons when you know the first ignition mode is on but then you need the second ignition mode with the key and then it's also possible to use the menus with the touch buttons with your thumbs so here i scroll with the thumb on the left side then it all goes left and it's all right then again i can choose different styles of the cockpit for example so it's a pretty simple solution and you can also control the car while driving that is basically the safety aspect of that you have for example another layout then again classic layout and the same would be for the right side so i can also use the home button and when i'm in it with home button then i use the right thumb to scroll in the menu right there on the right and then i can click well the clicking was working before if for example connect the phone via bluetooth but also the carplay and stuff media is available inside the gps i mean the menu is a little bit complicated i mean look at this visualization here what would you do with it you know i'm just thinking like please just now give me some space what is good actually that you can also scroll in and out zoom in and out here with a something when you are in a gps but that's i think a good solution so this one is i think oh well nice 3d animations here of the buildings at the frankfurt fairground so what's the difference in the convertible trunk? Here we go. This is when the roof is opened. So when you close the roof, you could push this one here inward and then you would have more height 
Of course, here, very limited space indeed. If you go to the airport with some trolleys, bags, whatever, then it seems like you have to close the roof. Then again, to increase the luggage space. So now the V12 by Turbo, here with 630 horsepower. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. The engine is bigger than the car itself, it looks like. Well, 630 horsepower, a little bit more than the V8, but again, it is slower, more weight. Still, well, this one has all-wheel drive, but it's, you know, not the most modern technology as we have in the V8. That's the reason behind it. But what a massive piece here. Wow. And from the special AMG part of the Mercedes booth, we say goodbye for this feature on the S-Class Coupe and convertible with the facelift. Interesting changes, I think fresh up in the interior with the new steering wheel, exterior with new headlights, front grille and stuff. So also a little bit more spice on the exterior. Most important for sure, the assistance systems. And of course, for the sporty fans with the new S63, a new performance version available with the best acceleration. The interior, of course, needs some tweaking as for animal skin alternatives, especially in the S-Class. The E-Class, for example, Coupe and Covello are very good already in that. So as for me, I would still, you know, remain with the E-Coupe or the e convertible which you can still also see in the full review on Autogefuel. We will also link those then there to you. Of course, I would like to hear your feedback on the vehicles we've shown you. Which one would you actually go for and how do you rate also the other Coupes and Convertibles in the Mercedes lineup? Which one is your favorite? Thank you again for watching and also tune in to more episodes of Autogefühl.